In this video, I'm going to show you how I repaired the rung on this chair. I feel like this is a very um, common repair that needs to be made because myself and a lot of people I know use their chairs as step stools. I'm going to show you how I went about doing it. It's the best way I know how to do it. You could probably hand carve something like this. It's a pretty simple piece, but the lathe is going to be the way to do these repairs. So the first thing I did was try and match the species of the wood as best as I could because that's going to be really important when it comes time to stain it and get it to look like a seamless fit. Luckily on this chair, and you'll see it later in the video, the front part of the stretcher of the chair was pretty worn away and I could see uh, quickly that it was maple. I happened to have some maple laying around the shop, chopped it into a couple pieces and made it big enough so I could cut it down. So I'm gonna clean it up on the table saw and then bring it to the lathe. So obviously this is oversized. So that is what my chunk looks like. Like I said, I drew my circles, my center points and my circles on both ends. It's gonna be easier to do this when the piece is square and then I could clean up my edges. You do wanna glue this together fairly flat so that sending it through the table saw against the fence is not a dangerous cut. So I'm basically cleaning up one side can clean up the other. And then some people will start turning at this point. I like to add some 45s to it. I consider myself a novice turner. So the least amount of material I have to deal with removing, um, the better it's going to be for myself. So just these little 45s off the end. And you'll see I'm now pretty close to that diameter I need for the center. Obviously that is going to be the thickest part of this piece and then it tapers out from there. So on the rung that was not broken, I made a pretty quick pattern, pretty simple. I traced this with a pencil and then I cut out, rough cut it out and then kind of snuck into the dimensions until I got it to be just about a perfect fit. And then I could take this to the lathe and check my piece as I go to make sure it gets as close as possible. Now the um, couple that asked me to fix this, I've worked with them before. Um, I told them I'm not an expert at the lathe as you will see, but I can eke out pieces. So basically I'm using big roughing gouges to rough out the, the shape to get the diameter I need to start with. Um, you'll notice in this video I'm not really using the tools necessarily you should be using for this application. I'm using a lot of roughing, bigger roughing tools. That is just because I'm a little lazy. Most of my tools are not sharp enough, so I kind of stuck with the ones that were sharp. This was a quick turnaround job. Um, I don't have my sharpener set up, so admittedly that is kind of how I got this done. So as you can see, I marked center on the piece and I'm basically using exactly what this tool is made for, roughing it out. There's kind of this bulbous um, shape in the middle. It looks kind of like an oversized bead. And then from there, the two sides taper out. So you could see that that template I have comes in handy the whole process. I keep putting it up against the piece, marking where all of the dimensions of the wood start and stop, and then basically very slowly remove them. Now, if you watch a professional turner, they're gonna be able to take this down really quickly. You see as I'm going, I'm removing a little bit as I go from all the pieces and kind of jumping back and forth and sneaking up on those dimensions just because I'm not um, really adept at using the lathe. Like I said, as you'll see in the video, I can get pieces done, but um, for beginners, I think this is a, a good video because you could see you don't necessarily have to have the top of the line tools or a ton of skill to be able to do some of these simple quick repairs. It's a really nice repair to work on to, to get your skills better. It's not expense, an expensive amount of material. If you mess it up, it's something easy to start again. So then to finish this off, I know you can do this on the lathe, but I just kind of cut off the little pieces at the end because this is end grain, they snapped right off. And then I just drilled out the holes that were already in place on the chair because the pieces were still stuck in there. And then I could pop this in place, um, shoot a picture over to the customer. They thought it looked pretty good and I could now worry about staining it. So like I said, pretty simple repair. Um, it's something that I do somewhat often. Um, a lot of times I do turn down these jobs just because there's not a lot of money in them for the amount of work that it takes. 
but that is if you learn to do this you'll become pretty handy to friends and family because a lot of people have these old or broken chairs that honestly chairs are one of the few things that are the the bottoms are usually still made out of solid wood i say usually because i have seen um, some chairs with interesting materials for the legs but they're nice solid pieces and then for the stain match I just used a pre-stain I happened to be working on a piece in the shop that was almost the exact same color as this chair the customer had given me stain to do it so it was nice it was a peppercorn stain from from Mohawk stains which is a nicer grade of stain and I was able to match it with just the stain color I didn't have to do any mixing you could see the front of that chair is the piece I was talking about earlier with the worn part and that was how I was able to tell it was maple and the finish matching on this was a little difficult at first but it, I did some tests and Osmo ended up matching perfectly they liked it so much they asked me to do touch-ups on the rest of the chair so you could see that front is stained as well and that is basically what it looks like so if you can find a yard sale lathe like I did it's easy to do repairs like this